Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the channel. Now, so I was talking to one of my clients uh, about a week ago, talking about the difference between golf clubs and how he feels or not technology has changed the golfing iron. Now, he's got some old set of golf clubs and he's thinking about changing them for something new, but he's dubious as to the benefits of actually getting something new. Now, he thinks that 20 year old irons aren't gonna be anything different really to modern day stuff. So I thought, why not? Let's have a bit of a test. Now, I still happen to have, because I don't throw away stuff. <sighs> yeah, lots and lots of golf equipment, but I don't throw away stuff. So I still have my 20 year old set of Cobra SSI irons. Now this is a seven iron. I think I've got two iron to pitch and wedge. Back in the day where I didn't really know better. So I had two iron, yeah. Um, so I've got a seven iron here just for the test. And this is 33 degrees against, I'm gonna put it up against a Mizuno MP20 and it's a seven iron as well, but it's a distinctly a bladed object as you can see. There's not much help in this at all. Where on this one, on the SSI, this was designed from Cobra to be targeted toward the mid to high handicapper. It has got perimeter weight in and a little bit of urethane and all that lot in it to obviously try and be as forgiving as it can do off, off center hits. Put that up against this thing and this hasn't got much in the way of technology whatsoever. And that's the reason why I want to do it because, between a blade and this, because this has got no technology in it. It is literally just a slab of metal. So there should be a sizable gap between these two, if there is basically a difference between it or not. I don't know. I'm gonna go hit it loads of times. So first of all, we're gonna go pop it onto a hole. Oh, well, I've got 162 yards. Let's go change the data sets to Cobra first. Yes, do the Cobra first. Let's hit it a few times so we can actually see how it feels and looks and performs and all that lot. Um, and then we'll do the same thing when it comes to the uh, MP20 blade. Now, remember guys, stay at the end of the video because at the end of the video, I will be miss hitting these on purpose to see and testing both of these irons out from different parts of the face. And I'll try as best I can do to um, identically hit both in the same spot, although it's really, really difficult. So within reason, we'll have to, yeah, pinch the salt and all that lot, but we will be doing the testing. So that's gonna be back end of the video. Right, let's go get the computer set up properly and let's go hit the Cobra SSI first. First turn will be the Cobra SSI. Then we'll do the MP20 blade afterwards. But seven iron, seven iron, 33, 34 degrees. So there's only one degree of loft difference between these two. Yet this is aimed at the mid to high handicapper. This has got perimeter weighting. This has got a bit of urethane in it. It's got the size of club head, which is about four times the size of that blade. It hasn't, but it looks distinctly bigger than the blade. Um, so if you want real estate when it comes to you, um, yeah, then there you go. Um, it's got loads of offsets. So if you put this down by the golf ball, um, I, I would say on the face, you've got that round hit me there kind of thing, but it's bigger than the actual ball because his head's so big. Um, you have got a half decent amount of top line showing and you have got a bucket ton of um, offset. Um, sole thickness is not massively thick, but it has got those weird and wonderful chamfers. I mean, you've got different, yeah, you've got heel relief, toe relief and leading edge relief of uh, on the sole. And it's all to do with turf interaction. It's all that lovely thing we like to talk about. And my viewpoint would be if it was that good, all golf clubs would have it. Well, not all golf clubs, but basically all golf clubs would have copied that by now and they haven't got it. So yeah, make of that what you wish. But it has got lots of um, perimeter weighting, a little bit of urethane inside. This is a cast golf club, remember? So I don't expect it to be uber soft. Um, 162 yards, hole 14, Beaver Hills, Country Club. Um, holes on the left-hand side and we have a bunker which we should not miss it into on the left-hand side. So you are either looking at target or miss to the right. Don't miss left. Right, so let's give this a hit because um, going from blades, this could be quite an interesting sound. Yep. Definitely an interesting sound. Um, good shot. I haven't got one in yet, not on camera. <laughs> I suppose it doesn't count if it's a hole in one because I've just hit my first shot. And if I don't get it when the next one, it's not technically hole in one, is it? But um, so two mil, eight mil low, slightly low on the face, but um, I have to use quad to tell me that because I have not got a clue where I'm hitting this. I've got an understanding, give or take, but feedback wise, this thing does not give you. Um, no, it's not. Um, it's a decent result, two yards offline. It's a, it's a good shot, but the, but the sound this makes is quite um, audibly um, noisy. We'll call it noisy. It's quite distinct. 
that's a miss it. There you go, that's low on the face. Shape in the right way though. There you go. I am all day long, I'm delivering today, was it, yeah, um, basically path zero face, fractionally open, but low on the face. So we're gonna be penalized distance, yes we are. However, um, we've got the shot shape we need because obviously the hole dictates do not miss it left. That does not feel very nice whatsoever when you hit it there. Safe. <laughs> yeah, path slightly from the inside, face very square and within 0.5 of a degree. Strike was slightly better, one mil low at nine mil toe, single digit miss, uh, 160 yards. It's fine, it's doing fine, but I've got no clue why I'm hitting this whatsoever. So if you're trying to practice your strike, yeah, good luck. And the noise you're getting from these are, um, yeah, off-putting. Again, fine. Buff. Birdie putt, yeah, but I have to look at quad now to tell me where I'm hitting this. Um, seven mil low, nine mil toe. There you go, good delivery, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't find it enjoyable to hit whatsoever. Um, is it forgiving? Well, remember guys, we're gonna have to sort of wait to the end of the video because I'm gonna be putting this up against the MP20 and hitting it from all over this place. Not just from single digit miss, we're gonna get some double digit misses in there as well and see and directly compare how this is to the MP20. And talk about the MP20, let's go change data sets. We have a different color and then we'll go straight over to that and give that one a match up against this. So, data set changed. MP20, blade. Not much to talk about when it comes to the technology within an MP20 blade, why? Because there is none of it. It is simply a slab of metal. Um, well, that's not entirely true. Uh, manufacturers go to quite large lengths. One, making blades look as attractive as they possibly can do because it is for a certain type of golfer that likes looking at certain type of things. Um, but they are moving mass even within the head to try and make certain strikes a little bit more favorable. So when it comes to the technology within this head of a brand newish head against a 20 year old head, um, 20 year old heads, they are game improvement heads should still outdo a blade, which is like a slab of metal. But when it comes to the looks of this one, yeah, there is a distinct difference. There is now no offset, much nice looking. Um, blade lengths are now, it looks tiny compared to just hitting these things. Wow, go back to this and yeah, top lines are tiny, all that lot and it'll, yeah. So let's see if we can gain a little bit more feedback this time. Yeah, distinctly, that's low heel. <laughs> Yeah, now you can feel it. I don't even have to look at quad, I can feel that. Uh, how do we get on? There you go, four mil low, 17 heel. Wow, look at the difference when you literally flick between golf clubs. You get used to hitting a certain uh, type of golf club and then you go to a different one, different weighted one, and your strike changes straight away. So it's gonna take me a few shots to probably dial it back in again. Now I could feel that <laughs> distinctly, but that's impressive. Now, Th these normally go about 164. I've just literally done a video on my channel. Okay, well up there, click on that one after. You can do it now and come back to this one, I don't mind. Um, about the differences between carry distances and know your numbers and all that, hit more greens. Have a look at that one, it's quite good. Um, but I normally hit this one about 164, 165 carry of an average, and that's gone 159 from that strike and I'm not swinging at my full 92 miles an hour, I'm dialing it back a little bit. Yeah, it just feels nice. Still fractionally healy. Oh, 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 free the flag, look. There you go. Um, it's nice. The difference now, five mil low, seven mil heel, so still slightly healy, but 164. Um, path is zero, face is 0.4. Yeah, I, I, okay, if you're gonna hit middle, or anywhere close to middle, yeah, you're not gonna beat a set of blades. Now, I'm not gonna hit as many, because we're not trying, what we try to prove here, really. Safe. Doof. Yeah, look at that. Um, when you go to a, a blade, and when you go to a more of a players inspired iron, you can distinctly 
distinctly feel the contact so much more. The feedback you get from understanding exactly where you're hitting it on the face is distinct and pronounced. I cannot state that enough. The difference between these two irons when it comes to design is huge, but when it also comes to feedback is huge also. I know exactly where I'm hitting this on the face within the millimeter give or take. I don't have to have a quad telling me that thing I do. I haven't got a clue where I'm hitting that. I kind of hit it and I'm going, well, I know I didn't hit middle, but uh, yeah, big difference. Right, so let's go give this a hit a few times, off more than a few actually. And I'm gonna go test now the difference between Okay, you hit something seven mil toe, two mil low, or getting very, very close to middle, and of course it's gonna perform exactly how you tell it to perform. Let's go hit this loads of times off of different parts of the face so we can compare the difference between 20-year-old technology against brand new-ish blades. Be an interesting test. After everything now all done, um, well, I've got some interesting results to give because Remember, we're putting this up against a 20 year old game improvement iron. It's not a super game improvement iron, it's a game improvement iron up against a blade. So within reason, you would expect still the game improvement iron of yesteryear to be far more forgiving than a blade of nowadays. But let's go have a little look. So we'll go to the averages first and not to get too sort of drawn down onto the individual shots, but I have got some forgiveness shots in a sec. So this is for the um, SSI, so the Cobra SSI. On average, 115.7 miles an hour, 18.3 degrees of launch. Spinning at 6.7 on average, going up at 32 and 47.2 degrees of descent angle, which is good. Anything over 45 degrees is what I'm looking for. And 159. If we compare that one straight over to the Mizuno uh, MP20, we have an average of 116.2, so fractionally faster by 0.5 of a mile an hour. Um, launching at 19.3, so that is going up another degree but then again, it has got one more degree of static loft. So there you go. Um, spinning at 6.5, uh, going up at 33 yards and 48.2 degrees descent angle. So it's going up a fraction higher and descending a fraction steeper and going two yards more, considering it's one degree less more loft. So less distance more, yeah, you kind of get the idea. So let's go by the clubhead speed and see if there's any sort of distinct differences between them. If you look at the um, Cobra SSI, 85 or 88.5 miles an hour, 1.31 is the efficiency, 5.3 down attack angle, 0.3 from the inside, 0.2 close. So very small amounts when it comes to path and delivery. Uh, 0.3 up on its lie, 26.9 degrees of dynamic loft, and one mil heel, six mil low. But I have put on there the standard deviation uh, markers on there as well, so you guys can see what the differences are when it comes to standard deviation. And standard deviation is a measure of um, the, the range of movement, we'll call it. Now, it's a much more uh, in depth than if I'll put it up on the screen there when it comes to. <laughs> Yeah, the true definition of it, well, it takes too long. So, but effectively, this, the, the larger the standard deviation, the bigger the uh, range. There we go. Um, if you then go over to the uh, MP20, it's 89.5 miles an hour, so I have gone up by one mile an hour on my clubhead speed, one mile an hour, not five, one. Uh, 1.30 when it comes to the uh, efficiency, 4.9 down. 0.1 from the inside, 0.1 glow, so ridiculously small to zero, zero. 0 0.6 up, 27.9 degrees of um, dynamic loft. Screen was just about to turn off. Um, so we're 27.9 degrees of dynamic loft against 26.9. Remember, this has got one degree of loft difference, 34 and 33. That's why there's one degree of delivered loft difference. Um, but with zero mil toe, five mil low, you might say, well, one mil heel, six mil low, was the SSI against the uh, zero, mil to, zero mil toe, five mil low. So one mil and one mil, two mil gross, better strike. If you look at the standard deviation, seven mil and five mil against six mil and five mil, actually I hit the MP20 on average worse. So you have to put that in your head, worse. Um, yet I've got a distance gain of two yards. Now I did swing it one mile an hour faster. Yes, I did and then you'll have an associated difference with that. And so there you go, there's your difference on there. But remember, when it comes to the average strike, 
I hit it slightly worse. So let's go to the all important uh, misses. So if we look at the misses uh, from the SSI and we'll go straight over, I'll try to compare as best I can do. So we're gonna go one SSI, one um, MP20, one SSI, one MP20, like kind of idea. So 87.2 miles an hour, 0.4 from the inside, 0.8 open. So a very small amount of delivery, but 14 mil low, one mil heel, 15 mil off gross, but 14 mil low. Um, 151 carry, so it has dropped a considerable amount of yardage. Now bear in mind this, what I've been hitting here, a good shot will go 166, with an MP20 a good shot will go about 164. Um, so if you then go over to the next one, which is a 2 uh, an, an MP20 blade, not a 2 one um, 90.2 miles now, so swing speed has gone up by three miles now, so bear that in mind. Um, 0.3 path, one slightly from uh, face open, so it'll baby cut, but 17 mil low, 13 heel, that's 30 mil off. Not 15, 30. Double the amount of variance off of middle, and that's lost 15 yards. Now, okay, I've swung three miles an hour faster, yes, but I have doubled the strike worse and it has matched the 15 yards loss from 17 mil low 13 heel on a blade yep um, ssi miss we've got 89.3 miles now 1.8 across 0.3 open so baby left one would be with a little cut two mil high 12 mil toe so it's hit the toe and has twisted you can see there it's twisted because that should basically miss left the target is 0.5 left so that the face is twisted on impact um and it's dropped to 156 so it's dropped 10 yards from optum off a 12 mil toe um, strike and there is a face twist involved as well so you've got to bear that in mind when it comes to you try and hit target that should miss left should but it didn't because of face twist. Um, going over to the MP20, uh, 89.7 miles an hour rather than 89.3. 0.9 from, from the inside, 0.9 closed, like a tiny little baby draw. Seven mil low, 13 mil toe, so 20 mil gross as opposed to 14. Um, and it's lost seven yards, so not 10, seven. So even that is more forgiving than the SSI. Uh, next one, go to the 89 miles an hour, 0.5 from the inside, 0.1 open, so zero basically. Nine mil low, 13 heel, not very nice whatsoever, and it has gone uh, 156, dropped 10 yards. Go over to the MP20, 89.8 rather than 89, so 0.8 miles an hour faster, but 0.0, .0 path, 1.9 open. Now, 1.9 open will make the face cut anyway. Um, and it will add spin and all that lot and uh, less ball speed because of the two open face. But it's carried 158 yards, lost six yards also, um, on six mil low, 12 mil heel, so 18 mil away um, rather than 21. So we are looking at 22, sorry. So we're looking at basically four mil difference and that four mil difference, um, MP20 wins again, blade. Then it doesn't matter what blade you're running, it's blade um, wins again. Uh, let's go SSI for the last time, I think it is. Oh no, we've got one more to go after that. Um, 87 miles an hour, 0.6 across, 0.1 open. Again, very, 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 very bland. Um, 13 mil low, zero mil toe. So 13 mil low at 151, and it has lost from 15 yards. So it's lost 15 yards from 13 low. It really does not like shots low on the face really does not like shots low on the face if you go over to the mp20 you've got 87.4 miles an hour rather than 87 so within reason exactly the same point two, point two across path 1.4 closed 30 mil low zero mil toe so 30 mil again yeah and we've lost 11 yards now we're not aren't we we are arguing over four yards we are um but this is a blade so within reason it is lost less than a game improvement iron from yesteryear. Um, so again, blade wins. Go to the last one, the SSI, 90.1 miles an hour speed, 0.7 across, 0.3 open, so baby, baby, baby little fade. Uh, six mil low, zero mil toe, it is a full on normal shot at 166. Six mil low is fine, quarter of an inch is nothing. Then if you go over to a MP20, 90.4, so three, 
Uh, 0.3 of a mile an hour faster, 1.1 across, I can't aim straight, and 0.0, .0 face, uh, 164. But that one is from a 6mm low, 9mm heel. That is not middle, that is 9mm worse than the previous one, yet it's going the right amount of distance. Blade wins again. So, um, to cut this one down to a very, very small story, it effectively means this one thing. Um, I didn't know until doing this test exactly how good or not um, golf clubs were from 20 years ago, my golf clubs that I used to use, against blades that are around nowadays. Um, it's crazy to think that a mid to high handicap iron from 20 years ago are as forgiving as blades are nowadays. And people talk about the fact that how hard to hit blades are. You can see from this information here that if you look at it, actually the MP20 blade is as forgiven, if not somewhat better sometimes, than the 20 year old game improvement iron. Um, yes, brand new game improvement irons are more forgiving than blades nowadays, definitely. So you can see the chasm that is opened up here when it comes to the 20 year old uh, game improvement iron against a brand new game improvement iron. So yes, I will be chatting to my client and giving them the information of this, or you can watch this on YouTube, to give them the answer that effectively, should he potentially go out there and look to uh, test some new equipment and the benefits that he's gonna gain from that, definitely. Uh, because if he can get the same amount of uh, forgiveness from a blade than he can from his 20 year old irons, then yeah, there's lots and lots of free help to be had, although not free, because you've still got to buy the golf clubs anyway. But yeah, that's a personal choice, a choice between yourself. So if you like the video, by all means, go down there, thumbs up, yep, do that one, click that there. YouTube loves it, so do I. Next to it is a little red button. It's a subscribe button. If you can click that one, that'd be great, because it is free, and that allows you to watch content like this for free. Uh, next to that, while you're there, is a little bell icon. If you click that bell icon, that is a notification bell. That'll let you know next time I upload another video. So I hope you well, and we'll see you again soon.